All right, let's take a look at an example of rational equations. So I'm looking at problem 30 in section P3, which happens to be on page uh, 31. And we've got the equation x over x minus 3 plus 3 over x plus 3. And this equals 6x over x squared minus 9. So we're going to have to factor all of the denominators. And the first two are about as factored as you can get. The last one, the one on the right, the x squared minus 6, that's what we call a difference of squares. That is, x squared minus 9 is 3 squared. So it's x squared minus 3 squared. And that has a special factorization. If you're not aware of it, that's, that's all right. But just to get through this example, um, I'm going to pretend like you're aware of this factorization. It's going to be uh, x minus 3 times x plus 3. If uh, you're not aware of that, don't worry about that. Just kind of take this as given. You know, think of us as we were starting at this point rather than this point. So, now we need a least common denominator, which we're going to start out, we need an x minus 3, we also need an x plus 3, and then when we see the denominator on the right, we have x minus 3, we have 1x minus 3, and we have 1x plus 3. So there's no need to repeat either of those. So that's our least common denominator, and we're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So multiplying the left means distributing the LCD to the first and the second terms. So we're going to multiply x minus 3 times x plus 3 to both terms on the left. We're going to do x minus 3x plus 3 times x over x minus 3. And we're going to multiply the LCD times x over x plus 3. So it's going to look like x minus 3 times x plus 3 times 3 over x plus 3. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we'll have the LCD x minus 3 times x plus 3 times uh, the right-hand side, 6 over basically the LCD, x minus 3 times x plus 3. So canceling. Well, what do we get? Uh, x minus 3's cancel in the first term. Uh, x plus 3's will cancel in the second term. And on the right-hand side, both x minus 3 and x plus 3 will cancel. So what are we left with? We're left with x plus 3 times x or x times x plus 3 reordering those factors in the first term. In the second term x minus 3 times 3 which is the same as 3 times x minus 3. And then on the right hand side we have uh, just 6x. So let's see, that's x times x is x squared. x plus 3 is x, uh, 3x. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times minus 3 is uh, minus 9. And this is supposed to equal 6x. So we have, let's see, on the left we can combine the three the two 3x's. 3x plus 3x is 6x. So we get x squared plus 6x minus 9. And on the right we still just have 6x. So now that this is simplified as we can get it, x squareds, x's, numbers, quadratic. So get everything to one side, subtract 6x from both sides. That'll actually cancel the 6x's from both sides. So we just have x squared minus 9. 
Now, you can factor it again, like we just did here, you know, or you can move the 9, the minus 9, add it to both, add 9 to both sides to get x squared equals 9. Take uh, square roots, leaving you with x equals plus or minus square root of 9, and square root of 9 is 3, so we have x equals plus or minus 3. And that was our kind of, forgot to label that, that was our solving stage. After we multiply it by the LCD and simplify, we solve, but we're not done when we solve, we have to check. Namely, we have to check that the denominators are not zero at any of our, or at any one of our uh, solutions. So if x equals plus 3, does any denominator become 0? If x is plus 3, we get 3 minus 3, which is 0. The first one is 0. So x can't be plus 3. We have to throw x equals 3 out, because it made one denominator 0. It'll actually make the first and the third, the last denominator, 0. But all it needs is to make 1, 0, and it's thrown out. What about x equals minus 3? Well, if x equals minus 3, minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6, that's okay. Minus 3 plus 3, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So, that's got to go as well. So, x equals minus 3 is going to make the second denominator 0. It also makes the third and last denominator 0 as well. So both solutions have to be thrown out, which means we're left with no solutions, which is, in some sense, your solution. It is your answer. Your answer is that this exercise, this equation, has no solutions. And you might see this in the book written as a capital O or a circle um, with a line through it, um, which is fancy notation for the empty set, which if you want to know about it, take some undergraduate math major courses. But otherwise, there's one example. And as I'm out of pages in this notebook, uh, we'll do another example in the next video.